Hi again. This is the second in the series of, of uh, augmenting videos that I'm doing for the July clinic. This one is where I do a random blinking of multiple LEDs. So with that, let's get started. Random blinking of multiple LEDs. I went on the internet and I did a search for just that. I said, somebody's already written this code. Why bother? I'll just copy it and uh, teach you how to use it. So sure enough, I went out there and I found a, a random blinking uh, LED with only nine loads, lines of code. And uh, let's just see what it does, right? We'll run his little video. And there you can see he's got random blinking LEDs. Isn't that nice? That's real nice. So we can achieve that as well. But the thing about that is, let me stop oh, there and stop so I can get rid of that background noise. Okay, the, the thing is, he did it, this as a programming exercise. And uh, to be polite, maybe show off a little bit. He knows uh, the C++ language pretty good. So he's done all this in what he calls nine lines of code. It works, it's great, it's beautiful programming, but it's nothing I can teach you from. Um, it's it's way beyond introductory level. But uh, that's nice sweet code. But I did borrow one thing from him. I liked the way he used the arrays. So I, I kept that idea and I'm using that in my demonstration. So uh, with that said, we'll just set this aside because uh, we're not going to use it anymore and we'll we'll bring up uh, what we're actually doing here now to get started um, oh there it is there's the one I want what I did was I took my digital outputs over here 8 through 13 digital pins 8 through 13 and I fanned them out to LEDs so this is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Okay, and each one's got an LED on it, so you can see it blink. And this wire here, of course, comes across over to here, and that's my ground bus. Okay, it comes and feeds common all the way down through here and grounds all those LEDs. So that's the physical circuit we're looking at. I hope that's clear. Now, I have a, a recording of what this looks like. So let's see it recorded. Let it play back. Here you can see I've fanned out all my wires, and here's my ground coming around over to this side. We'll speed that up a little bit. Yeah, there's a lot of glare. I'll fix that. I mean, there we go. I tip it up on its side, and I find it works much better. And I'll pick it up here in a little bit. Now, one thing that came up during the the, uh, the clinic itself was a question about uh, the brightness. Uh, red and green, they, they weren't equal brightness. And you can see here, each one of these LEDs is getting five volts to the same size resistor. And yet they are all different brightnesses. That's because of the wave frequency of the light that they're producing. So you have to uh, uh, compensate for that by uh, adjusting the resistor size some way so that you can uh, dim it or brighten it as you need it. So that's, that's the reason for that is, the, is the, where it is in the light spectrum that influences how bright it's going to be. Now we'll, we'll uh, take a look at the code see how we did all this that'll quit in a second and just sit there okay now this is a uh, involved code guys so it's going to take a little bit I went over a lot of this during the clinic so we're, we're not going to beat that horse to death again but I, I introduced the idea see here in my comments section I said set all the above items 
and no code changes are needed below this point. So if you just want to borrow this code, load it into your Uno or your, your Nano, um, you can just play with this section till you get the blinks the way you like them. And you don't even have to worry about the rest of the code. Okay, so let's let's go through and see how I've set this all up. The first thing I ask you is how many LEDs are you going to be playing with? And I've said I want to use six. So I declared a constant of integer type, data type, and I said I want it to, to name that LED count equals six. So now everywhere in my program that I use the, the the name LED count, it knows to substitute the value for the for the number six. Then I say, okay, what pins are your LEDs going to be connected to? So I need to, to store that information, right? I have to know what pins to control. So I say, okay, I'm going to declare integers, LEDs, and remember the little brackets I talked about during the, the clinic. Brackets tell you you're storing an array. An array means you're going to link uh, several elements together. So I have uh, an array of LEDs. And what I'm going to store in this array is the pin numbers. So I say, okay, I'm using pin 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. So, so now anywhere I want to know, I want to control any one of these pins, I just see, say LEDs, and in the brackets, I put the, the offset for the one I want to use. So let's say I want to use the, the third LED. Uh, I'm going to control the third pin. So I would put LEDs 2. And the reason it's 2 and not 3 is because we use 0 as a real address. So if I say LEDs 2, it goes in here and it says 0, 1, 2. You can see I'm on the third element right there. So I, I get to, to pick which one I want by putting my offset in here. So now I, I got my pins and a way to select which pin I want to deal with. Now, the set time um, tells me how long you want to use it. Okay, and, and I have to tell, I have to remember if I've tested it to see if I've used it for the, the amount of time that you specified. So I create another array called LEDs tested. Okay and I make it LED count long. Remember, LED count is the same as saying six. And I preset all that with zeros. It was one, two, three, four, five, six zeros. So now I've just allocated space and memory. That's what I've done here. I've not really stored anything meaningful. I have just reserved the memory locations so I can use them. Next I do, set LED initial state and what I'm saying here is when when you first power the board up how do you want the pin to behave do you want the LED on that pin to be on or do you want the LED on that pin to be off so I want to know the state of that pin so I create a, another array but this time a boolean data type meaning single bits right of LED count so I again I'm creating six elements right so then I come in here and I say uh, for the first pin I want it high or on the second pin I want it low or off high high low low so I can precondition how my LEDs start up next I come down here and I want to know how long time I want the, each LED to blink in milliseconds. So I have to create an unsigned, unsigned long. Remember, that's a huge number that, uh, that it can hold. And I call it set time. And again, it's going to be six elements long. And so I say I, I want to preset each one of these to 1,200 milliseconds, 2,500 milliseconds, 9,000 milliseconds, 42, 55, 8,000. 
See how that works? So the first LED will be on for 1.2 seconds and off 1.2 seconds. The second LED is going to be on for 2.5 seconds, off for 2.5 seconds. Right? See how that's working? So this is pin 8, pin 9, pin 10, 11, 12, and pin 13. See the correlation? I hope uh, I'm not making you want to drop out. But you just need to, to know a little bit about how to use this program. If you get it, download it, and play with this, it begins to make sense pretty quick. The last item I have to define is an unsighted and long called cycle. Now, what I do with cycle is I, I have to know that I've run my code long enough to be able to test the longest set time that I'm using. So if I look in here, the longest set time that I'm using here is, is 9,000 or 9 seconds. So I set my cycle to be slightly longer. You know, I chose 9,100. I could have said 9,010 and, and kept it tighter, but <laughs> we're not going to ever notice the, those millisecond differences. Okay, so... As long as that number is longer than the longest blink time that you set in here for your LEDs, that, that's the important thing. Once you've set all that up, you download it into the chip, it'll run. You don't even have to understand the rest of this code. So let's just see a, a little bit about how this code works. Okay. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preset... Um, an a integer here called i e to the value of zero. Okay, and I'm going to use that to keep track of how many of the LEDs I've tested, and, and so I need it to, uh, preset to zero because when I start, I haven't tested anything, I haven't done anything. I just put it to a reference point of zero. Then I also go in here and I define two unsigned longs. One called previous milliseconds, that, and I set it to zero, and current milliseconds, and I set it to zero. So again, these are just set points. And basically, I'm reserving those memory locations. Later, I will use them to save time elements in there, so I can test against time. Remember, I need to know the time because I, I'm going to change my blink rates up here based on time, right? So I have to have some place to, to save time so I can check against it. Then here I, I'm going to do my setup code. Remember again, this is only done once when you first run the program. So if, if I start here, it'll end here. Whoops, I'm sorry. If I start here, it ends down here. Okay, so everything between this brace and this brace only gets done once. So I'm doing three different things in here. I use this for loop and I set an integer called i equals zero. Now this this variable i can be any name you want it to be because it's only going to be used by this for loop. Nobody else cares what, what this i means. Okay, and you'll see i used a lot because the for is what they call an itineration loop you're going to itinerate it over it a set number of times. So often you'll see the I used to stand for itinerator. Okay. So I'm going to preset that integer to the value of zero. Then I'm going to test it against my condition right here. So if I, which is preset to zero, is less than LED count. LED count is six, right? So zero is less than six. That's a true statement. So if, with that being true, then I'm going to do everything between this brace and this brace. Okay, so I'll drop in here, and I say pin mode. Remember, when we did the blink, we used pin mode. All we're doing is saying, I want to set this pin to, to and use it as an output. Okay, but instead of just giving it a, a fixed pin number like we did in blink, I'm using my array. And remember, with, with an array, you give it an offset to find 
which one you want to talk to within the, the six elements. So right now, I is zero. So I'm telling it set pin at uh, eight to an output. Delay 10 milliseconds, come back up. This then says, this is shorthand for add one to the value of I. So the first thing it does is add one to the value of I. So I is now equal to one. One is still less than six, so it drops back in. Now it says pin mode one, set pin mode for LED at, at offset one to an output. So that's pin nine. You see this pattern? So I'm, I'm going to itinerate through all my pins and set them all to outputs. Drop down to the next for loop. And what I'm going to do here this time is I'm going to preset everything for my startup. Remember above in state, I allow you to set the state at startup. It can be high, it can be low, it can be high, it can be low. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to look at all those highs and lows one at a time. And I'm going to go to each pin one at a time. Okay. And I'm going to write that value to that pin. So I'm going to either send it a high or a low. So I'm either turning it on or I'm turning it off. And I delay for 10 milliseconds. I come back up. Of course, now I've added one to I again. So I is 1, I is 2, I is 3, I is 4. See how I'm looping through all six of my pins. And I'm setting them to my desired start state. Down here, the next thing I'm going to do is I start a, a function call that I'm borrowing called serial. And I set it to the baud rate that I want to talk to. When I start running this code, I'm going to come up here in my tools. And I'm going to turn on the serial monitor so you can see things and, and see how it's working inside the program. That's what this is doing for me. Okay. So once I've got all that preconditioned, then I'm going to drop into my loop. Let me expand this a little bit, see if I can get more of the program to to show up here. Can't get it all to show. But here's my opening brace. Here's my closing brace way down here. Okay. Now the program that I showed you at the beginning with the video with the blinking lights. Remember he did this all in nine loads lines of code. I've expanded this way out into 20, 30 lines of code. And the reason I did that is that it's easier for a non-programmer to, to learn these small chunks, okay, and, and find out how to do it. Programmers are, are like liars. Uh, the first liar doesn't stand a chance. Neither does the first programmer. <laughs> because the first programmer's got to think out all how it's got to be done and get it out of his mind onto the paper. The second programmer gets to see what's on the paper and say, oh, yeah, I understand that, but I would have done this. So he gets to write the code a different way. So the first liar doesn't stand a chance because the second liar then gets to say, oh, I can outdo that lie, right? Same way with programming. Everybody uh, uh, borrows code. You're supposed to give credit when you do. Okay, that's the, that's the nice thing. Make sure you just say, oh, I based this code on somebody else. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to drop in here, and we're going to uh, capture some time. Okay, so we capture time by using a, a built-in function called mills. Okay, and what that function does is it goes out and it reads the hardware clock that's built into the, into the chip. And it's counting milliseconds from the time you start, from the time you power up the card, it starts counting milliseconds. Okay, so I'm going to take the current number of milliseconds and I'm going to store it in a variable that I created called previous milliseconds. And I'm going to use that in a little bit here. Then I'm going to preconditioned 
my uh, my test. Remember above, I created LED test. I I set them to zero up up above, so I could have actually left this one out. And all I'm going to do is go go through all six. Remember, LED here is a six, right? And I'm going to itinerate six times through the LED test array. I'm going to set them all to zeros just to make sure it's there. Okay. I also put it here because later, once I've tested them all, when I come back up, I have to erase my memory of having tested them so I can start over again. Then I'm going to do a do. Okay. A do while loop. A do that do starts way up there and ends way down here. So everything between that bottom brace and this brace is a do. I'm not going to spend a lot of time going into this for you, but I want you to see that that you can find these on the Arduino. If you go, if you just go to Google and say, "What is an Arduino do while?" You'll get a link that'll take you to the Arduino page. And here you can learn all the particulars about how to use that instruction and, the, and proper ways to syntax it down through here. Okay? But basically what we're doing here, this is easier to see than in my code because my code is real long. So here's your syntax. Do everything in, inside the beginning brace to the ending brace while this condition is true. So if I were to say uh, do this while Jim Kelly is speaking then it would as long as I'm speaking it will come back up here do these statement blocks drop back down come back up do these statement blocks drop down right but as soon if I stop speaking and I let uh, Tom begin to speak, then this statement becomes false, right? So when that happens, the code says, I'm done with doing this section of code. I drop down here to the next line of code, and I perform, start performing the next line of code. So that's how a, a do-while brace uh, works. So what I'm saying here in my code, let me expand that out and get rid of that. So we can read it all in, in one set. Good grief, that's wider than I thought, my comments. There we go. Got rid of the expansion bar. So the do while, this is the outer do loop. See, here's the do loop that's inside this do loop. So this is referred to as the outer do loop. This is referred to as an inner do loop, okay, because it's inside of this one, okay. So the outer do while sets up everything to repeat cycle. Remember up in cycle, we had to set that variable cycle right here to be longer than the longest blink time. So what I'm doing down here with this do while is I'm saying, have I run this program long enough that I've blinked all the LEDs? So let's go down to the bottom of that do and let's see what the test is. Okay, so do while current milliseconds equals previous milliseconds. So I'm doing a math operation, right? I'm taking the current milliseconds and I'm subtracting the previous milliseconds or the point at which I started. And if it's less than cycles or nine seconds, then I come. I say I'm not done yet. So I come back up, and I go back through my loops again, and I keep doing that for nine seconds. Does that make sense? I hope so. We'll leave it at that. We're not going to go too deep. Now, so since I'm doing that, then I'm going to drop into my inner loop immediately, right? And the inner loop uh, loops back over the LED count to test all the LEDs in the array. Okay, so remember LED count is the same as saying six. 
So this do loop is going to get run six times. So let's look down here at its condition. Do while i is less than LED count. So as long as my itineration is less than six, I'm going to keep coming back up and redoing that do loop. Okay, does that make sense? So I'm going to do this do loop six times. I'm going to then I'm going to check if I've run for nine seconds. If not, I come back up and I start over again. And I keep running through my my uh, loops and testing for which one I'm supposed to be blinking. Okay, so here's where I set current mills from the from the internal clock. Remember, I was using current mills down here in my test, right? current mills minus previous mills. So that's where both of those variables get set. Okay, now here's a nice long drawn out comment. This is nothing to do with code. This doesn't even get loaded into the chip. This is just for us humans. Okay, I, uh, I want you to understand a few things. So I tell you, I will cycle from 0 through 5, getting data from each LED. Current mills minus previous mills, this math operation gives us how many milliseconds, okay? Have passed since we started the do while loop. The result is tested against the value stored in the set time array. If the math result is greater than or equal to the set time, then the half, then the second half of the test is performed and represents the human word and. and what I'm saying here is this symbol is the same as using the human word and. So let's see how this works. If, now yesterday I, I kind of gave a simple explanation of this, of, you know, you tell your boy, go to the refrigerator and get me a beer. But if the beer is warm, bring me a Coke. Okay, so you, you've you got a condition there. If the beer is cold, bring it to me. Or else, bring me a, a Coke. So that's basically what we're doing here. Okay, we, we have two conditions that we're testing. Here's our and. that. So this is condition one. And this is condition two. Okay, so let's see how this works. So if I get my current milliseconds, which I stored up here, and I subtract my previous milliseconds, which I stored just a couple of lines up here, right? As long as if if that math operation is greater than or equal to the set time, it's at array element i. Well, I is at zero for right now, okay, up here in the for loop, okay. So I go back up to set time, right here, 1200. So I'm, I'm testing that first LED and to see if I've had it turned on for 1200 milliseconds or if I've had it turned off for 1200 milliseconds okay so I come back down here I got ahead of myself there there we are okay so I'm saying if it's greater than or equal to 1200 milliseconds and LED 0 has not uh, is equal to zero, which means it hasn't been tested yet. Okay, so if it's had enough time, but I but I haven't recorded the fact that I've tested this yet, drop inside this if loop and do what I tell you to do. So here in the if loop, I do some human things for us to be able to test with, so you can see this work. Okay, 
this gets a little bit more uh, friendly for you to see. So I drop down in here and I give a bunch of, of print commands. Okay, serial print. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna turn on my serial monitor so you can see what's happening. All right. So I'm getting a, a bunch of test data that I'm sending out. And this is how you debug a program. Okay, so the first thing I did, right, was I said print the word difference. So here I print the word difference. Okay. Then I say print the value of test. Now I, I know the to print this is text and this is a value because text is enclosed in, in quotes and a value is not. So what's the difference? And I I print it out here. So the difference is eight thousand. Okay, at that point. And then I say serial print space. And all I'm doing is putting a little blank space in the page here. And then I say set time equals. And here I print set time equals. And I space, uh, whoops, and then I say print the the, uh, the value that's stored in, in the set time array. And then I put a blank line and then I say print i equals and then I print the value of i. So let's take a look at that over here. Okay. Um, I can't really freeze that. So you'll see it rotate on me as I go through here. Let's see if I can pick one down here. The difference here is 1200. Set time is 1200. I is equal to zero. So you see I'm, I'm testing. My set time is, uh, is a set value. My difference between the previous milliseconds and the current milliseconds is what I'm capturing here and it's equal to or greater than my preset and I'm testing I of zero so here you can see I is going zero one uh, three four five two zero one why is it skipping two because two has a very high set value in it see so it doesn't get tested as often uh, I mean the change the state doesn't get changed as often so that's how I'm deep how I debugged all this I, I made sure that my logic worked by doing this all right this is getting long so I'm gonna get a little bit faster with it so you don't uh, get bored to completely to death here's where I do my test okay I say if the LED state is low, set it to high, or vice versa. So I look at the LED state, if it's equal to low, then I set it to high. If it's high, then I set it to low, right? Then I write out to the, the, the pin that I'm currently testing, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6, and I set LED state, okay? And I toggle that pin. I either turn it on or I turn it off. I turn it on or I turn it off based on the fact that it's been on or off for the specified number of milliseconds over here. Okay, so that's basically all I'm doing in here. Here's where I increment I. Okay, so I increment I for my do loop so that it knows how many times it's been through through the loop. <clears throat> At the end of my do loop, if I've done it for 9,100 seconds, okay, then what I do is I go back to the top. But I made some comments down here at the bottom. When we go back to the top, this is what we do. We, we set a new previous millisecond time. We set all our LED tests back to zero and we drop back into our do loops so basically what I'm saying is we're going to come back up here to the top to our loop okay and here see I capture a new value of previous mills here I set all my LED tests back to zero and then I drop back into my do loops and I repeat over and over again 
that's why you see the repeating pattern over here. Okay, I gets reset and everybody gets tested again and again as long as I keep the board running. So that's that's how this board is working. I I hope this gives you some idea. Again, remember you don't have to understand the, all that code. You can study it to learn, but to use it, all you have to do is play with these these lines here, right? And put your values in your ones, your zeros, your pins. More than likely, you'll you don't even have to change this. If you change this to to three, then I'm only going to read zero, one, two. Right, I'll only read three elements out of these if you change this to three. So you could leave these pins alone. And and the same here, you could leave this at six. It doesn't care if you because if you set that to three, I'm only gonna use the first three. Okay? And the same thing here, you can leave this set at six and only adjust the first three. And here you would adjust just just the first three. Because I'm gonna ignore the last three because you told me up here to only use three. See how that's going to work? But remember, whatever you set these to, whatever the highest value is in here, you have to set this slightly higher. And then you can run this code and you can get your blinking pattern. You can come back in here. You can play with these time settings to, to make your blink rates realistic. You can... Uh, change your startup values uh, you know once you put your LEDs maybe in your windows if you think oh I would rather have this window on and that window off you can come back here and, and turn the, the, the startup points get it all set up the way you want to use it again this is a good little test pattern so you can see how to use it I hope this was clear and you can see why I time constraints I didn't have time to go to this much detail on each of those videos so with that said let's just uh, go out here take a quick look this is live this is our blink rate pattern get back in here where you can see it again notice some some LEDs are brighter than others some are on longer and off longer than others because of that set time element up there, right? You can see this red one here on the end. This sucker here, it stays on for 9 seconds and it stays off for 9 seconds. That's that, that uh, longest set time. See how long it's staying off? There it is. Now it's on. And it's going to be on for 9 seconds. In the meantime, the others are blinking on and off at their desired blink rate. Okay, so that, that's how this whole program works. I hope this has been enjoyable. I hope you've learned a little bit more than we did in the first go around. With that, I'll say adios. Bye-bye. Have a good day.